Hi everyone, welcome to the seventh annual ETE conference. Today, along with Dr. Jocelyn Cuthbert and Michael Vakula, I'm going to be presenting on the Explore College Teaching Track, our brand new track that we have designed directly towards graduate st students here at Utah State to help improve their instructor development while they're here. Okay. We're going to talk about what ETE is. We're going to talk about exactly what the ex you can get from the Explore program. We're going to talk about a lot of the benefits associated with it here and why every graduate student, teaching or not, should really consider participating in this program. Okay. So, what is ETE? Well, the Office of Empowering Teaching Excellence here at Utah State is a center for learning. And what we do here is we try to promote this culture of teaching excellence. And in doing so, we're hoping to improve our student success. At ETE, what we're really trying to do is help give instructors, be it graduate students or tenure faculty, lecturers, assistant professors, whoever they may be, the resources they need to improve in their instructor development and having that trickle down to the success of our students. ET was established in 2014 with Robert Wagner, Neil Legler, Travis Thurston. And in doing so, we adapted what is called the architecture of engagement. And through the architecture of engagement, we apply this to our entire learning community. We prompted, through engagement, implementation, and contribute, this program where we can allow our instructors to continuously grow throughout their teaching experience here at Utah State. So, why did we do this? Well, as part of ETE, we figured out that these one-off workshops, seminars, conferences, are great for our instructors to participate in. But if it's just a one-off, if it's just this one thing that we're engaging in, it doesn't have great impact on our students and thus student success. So what ETE did, along with other departments in AIS and City, was create this multi-tiered architecture of engagement, which is not just one event, but series of events that we can help with instructor development. And the first basic tier, as you can see here, is engage. So we're getting excited and we go to this fabulous ETE conference we hear about every August. And we sit and we listen. We listen to new ideas. We listen to what our colleagues and people from different departments are doing to help their students learn better, to help with engagement, to help with accessibility and inclusion. And we take that and we reflect on it and somewhere or another, that impacts us as an educator. That changes our teaching philosophy, right? So that's the basic engaged tier that we have as a foundation for the ETE 10 program. Beyond that, we have implement. So you were impacted and you were touched by this presentation that we gave today, right? So what we do next is we implement it. A lot of those changes that we saw at the conference, we can make those. We can make those in our class and we can impact our students. So we change our syllabus. We change our assignments. We change the way in which our students communicate with us. And then we see what kind of changes those actually make to our students through mid-semester feedbacks, through the idea surveys, through um, just the grades that our students are producing within the classroom. Okay. We take that to the next tier. Now we've actually implemented these things in our classroom, and now we get to turn around and present what we've learned what worked for us, what didn't work for us at this contribute level. We come back to the conference next year like, this is great, this was amazing, this is what I did, and this is the amazing things that I learned from that and how this impacted my students. Through all of this, this became the foundation of the ETE 10 program. A series of badges that can be awarded in the engage, the implement, and contribute tiers that culminate into these teaching certificates. The first teaching certificates we had were the teaching scholar certificate at that basic level, and then we had the master teaching certificate, which we have over 20 educators across Utah State who've earned the teaching scholar certificate, but there was a gap. This gap came in the form of how we were reaching our graduate students. Because like I said, ETE is not just for our tenure professors or our lecturers. ET10 is for any faculty, staff, graduate student, or anyone else at the university who wants to improve their instruction. And while graduate students have always been welcome to an ET event, 
there wasn't any marketing or anything set up to entice or encourage their involvement in the program. So Jocelyn Cuthbert, which you'll hear from in just a little while, spearheaded, along with many other graduate students, this new program we have, which is the Explore College Teaching Certificate and Track that's up just for our graduate students here at Utah State. And in doing so, it allows graduate students to not feel like they are honing in or just like coming in to the teacher's domain, but actually designated for them. Things like the missing classroom and what we didn't learn as, as undergrads that we need to know as teachers. And we get the support and resources we need to become better instructors to help our undergrads because when we elevate the level of instruction here at Utah State, we elevate the learning of everybody here. All right, so what does the Explore College Teaching Track and Certificate actually look like? Well, as Shelly mentioned, it requires five engage level badges. And there's gonna be four required, and then your choice of one additional one to earn the certificate. So the four that are required are the Plan Your Teaching Excellence Pathway. That's where everyone needs to start, and we'll get into the details of that in just a minute. Then there's the Explore course, which is a short course can, consisting of a few videos to get you just into the world of teaching for graduate students that is still being developed but very near completion. Then there's the ETE conference, which hopefully you're watching this video as a part of and you continue to go to in the future because it's a great conference to be a part of. And then finally, the last thing that's required is that you participate in a learning circle. And I hear uh, coming down the pipeline is actually a graduate specific learning circle that should de debut this fall. So you get to work with your peers. And this is usually something like reading a book about teaching and then uh, collaborating, answering questions and discussing the book. And then finally, the last badge is uh, your choice. So you could do something like um, foundations of USU teaching or go to an ETE seminar or event such as eLearnX where you learn about online teaching or the Teaching for Learning conference which we sometimes hold here at USU. So those five badges are the college teaching track and then they'll, once you complete all of them they'll, they'll uh, reward you a certificate of college teaching. So how do you begin earning these badges? Three easy steps. Plan, participate, and document. So the first part is planning, and this is what we were talking about earlier, where you, the first badge is planning your teaching excellence pathway. So this is where you schedule a meeting with the ETE staff, such as Dr. Travis Thurston or Shelly herself, and you sit down and you choose which goals you want to focus on, which badges you want to earn, um, which track you want to be a part of, and you take those goals, you write them down, Travis or Shelley can tell you all about the different badges that you can go for or the additional teaching certificates that you can um, continue on with past the Explore College teaching track. So you get your goal set, you make your plan, and you set dates to time bound the, this goal together, and then you add any notes that you might need. So once this is complete, you get your first badge and you're on your way to, um, to the college, to the certificate. So, Next is the fun part, participate. Hopefully you're participating right now in the ETE conference, and this is gonna result in a badge once you reflect upon it, which we'll get to next. But, I mean, usually in non-COVID non times, we, we have in-person conferences, workshops, and so on and so forth, but you can also always go back to the YouTube video, or to our YouTube channel, which is Empower Teaching on YouTube, and you can watch all of the previous events, workshops, so on and so forth, and then you can still earn badges from those previous events. So that brings us to the document. So this is the last step, and this is where you actually submit for the badge. So document is where you go back and you reflect on what you've done. So you reflect on your engagement. So say for the, you, you attend an ETE conference, and to get the badge, you're just gonna go answer a few prompts such as, what are one or two key points that you took away from the session? Or what are you excited about or interested in the session? So really easy, a couple paragraphs, and they're tailored to your individual um, teaching plan you may be on. So it might be a little bit different props depend, uh, prompts depending on what you're looking for. But then you can go ahead and track all of your badges. So if you look here, this is a screenshot of my current progress on the graduate student track. 
I'm just missing the Explorer course here, but I got my Plan My Pathway, and I got my ETE conference out of the way. So you can always keep tabs on what you've done and what you're missing to complete those certificates. And once you're done with the, the graduate student track, you might realize how awesome ETE is and you want to continue on learning and continue progressing as a teacher, but documenting it at the same time. So there's two other options that you can continue on with. There's the Teaching Scholar Certificate that Shelley mentioned earlier and the Master Teaching certifi Certificate. So the Teaching Scholar Certificate is going to require um, a total of six Engage badges, three Implement badges, and one Contribute Level badge. Then you'll end up, in your, then you'll end up with your Teaching Scholar Certificate. And then the Master's builds on that with an additional 10 badges with more of a focus on implementing and contributing back to ETE. So yeah, once you've planned, you've participated, and then you submit for your documentation, you can, it results in one of these teaching scholarships that's gonna look awesome on your CV and prepare you for a successful future as a teacher. So besides those benefits, why should, you, why should I join ETE? One of, the big, one of the big reasons I like being a part of ETE is having this this peer group uh, that is really interested in teaching. Shelly and Jocelyn have big, been big mentors to me. They kind of roped me into the program and I've had a lot of fun being, uh, helping them with the ETE 10 program and the uh, Explore College teaching track. But it's fun having my uh, research cohort over in my college and then this teaching, this teaching peer group that's campus-wide. And not just the Logan campus, I've worked with people from Blanding to Moab, all over the state, which is awesome, which you don't normally do with your research. So that's why I joined, but why did you guys join? I joined because I came in as a graduate student on a teaching fellowship. Unlike many other graduate students in my department who had research fellowships, I had a teaching fellowship. And I jumped in without any prior knowledge of really how to run a classroom. And what really sparked my interest was not only working with the students one-on-one, -on -one, but I ran into who I call my teaching mentor, my teaching guru, my second year here. And he told me about ETE and what was available through it. Unlike working with an advisor or other people in my department, working with this mentor and going to ETE events really sparked something in me really sparked this idea that, yes, I could be a great researcher, yes, I could do amazing things within my field, but I could also pass it on to my students. But how do I do that, and what are the best ways to do that? And for me, I didn't have that background, and that's what I needed. I needed that to make the difference I was looking for in the college setting. And for me, that made the difference. And I made friends, I worked through it, and today I am the ETE coordinator um, working with Travis Thurston in our department to try to help improve with Jocelyn and Mike this experience for our graduate students all across campus. For me, my experience with ETE, um, I think Shelly had a similar experience, was when I first started teaching and I really kind of discovered how much I loved teaching, I was craving any and all training I could get. I was looking for workshops, I was looking for seminars, I was trying to find any resources I could. And I found ETE and I was able to find some of the workshops and stuff they're offering and I wasn't sure if I was allowed to attend them. There's a couple times where I'd send out an email asking, are graduate students allowed to sign up for this? Um, and then I would go. And so I don't think that doing a certificate necessarily changed my motivation for attending these workshops and getting this training, but it definitely changed the way that I saw my role in that training it really made me focus on how I was taking that training into my classroom, on how I was implementing it. And it also made me look at the ways that I could contribute back to that program. I don't think I ever would have had the confidence to present at a teaching conference if I didn't need to in order to get a certificate. I just didn't have that self-confidence in that. I knew what I was doing enough as a teacher in order to kind of tell other people how to do that. It also really helped to kind of open up that mentorship and that community side of things. Um, being able to learn about these new opportunities that may be really interesting to me or you or anybody else, having somebody to reach out and be like, hey, have you heard about this? It's made a huge difference. Um, I applied to this ETE Scholar Program, which is allowing me to work with ETE 
um, and other mentors to do an educational research project and also get some more professional training and teaching and get different certifications. I would have never known about that program um, if it weren't for this certificate program. So ETE has been um, played a huge role in my, my confidence as an instructor and my capabilities as an instructor. So talking about what ETE can do for us, there are so many different resources that are available to you through this certification, through ETE. The first of which are these city instructional designers. I took a face-to-face -face course and co-instructed it with um, somebody who was a mentor in teaching, Dr. Kelly Munns, um, and I needed help. I had never remade a course before in Canvas, and I just needed a little bit of help getting started. And I had a standing appointment with uh, Aaron, who was able to help me through, show me some of the different tricks, show me how to make a Canvas page that worked really well for my course, help give me ideas for different resources, different assignments I could use. Um, so the instructional designers are great. They know a lot about what they're doing. They're really advanced in that Canvas side of things, and they can really lend a hand to you in building out your Canvas course. For ETE Foundations, uh, this is something that is aimed at incoming faculty, but really any incoming instructors. They give you really useful information about the student population we he have here at Utah State University. It's not a completely traditional student population. We have a lot of married students, a lot of people with families, a lot of people coming back after their mission. So it's really useful information to try and cater your course to the students that are taking it. And as you can see here, the Media Production Lab, which I have used a lot for my hybrid course. It's a great way to be able to create really high quality videos in a really professional setting. Um, and also having the resources of the media production experts here who can help you edit the videos, help give, kind of guide you on what the best way to make an online lecture is and how to make it more interesting and engaging for the students. As you're working through your certificate, um, you have to put in a teaching philosophy for some of the more advanced certifications. And this is a really good opportunity to develop and get feedback on materials you're going to be using to apply for jobs. Uh, I was getting feedback right as I was applying for different positions. Getting that feedback on my teaching philosophy was really amazing because as much as my PI could help with the research side of those job applications, she couldn't really give me feedback on what I was doing correctly or incorrectly in my teaching philosophy. eLearn X is a three-day really deep dive into teaching tools for online broadcast blended instruction. Um, you work towards a final project of kind of completing an assignment. Uh, you get to meet other instructors who are also interested in this online teaching and there's a lot of resources there. In addition, all of the city workshops and seminars they will use USU faculty who are really well known for their teaching. Um, they will bring in outside speakers. They brought in Josh Eiler, who's an author of a book, and he gave a really, really interesting seminar. Um, they bring in lots of different people on lots of different topics. So pretty much whatever your interest is in, in teaching, um, there's going to be one of these workshops or seminars that can really help you. And they have everything from really basic Canvas tools to how to be a dynamic lecture and just about everything in between. The other thing you get out of it is the connections, the community that you're creating, and these mentors and peers that can really help shape who you are as an instructor. First thing you're gonna do for your certifications is you're gonna meet with uh, ETE, so you're probably gonna meet with either Travis or Shelly, who you just heard from, and you're gonna plan the completion of one of these tracks based on your interest. Being able to talk to somebody who has been through this, who knows all the resources available to you about what you're interested in and how to best utilize those resources to kind of maximize your experience here, that's a huge benefit. The ETE conference and the Teaching for Learning conference, so the ETE is here at Utah State. Um, the Teaching for Learning is more regional. It'll go, uh, this year it was in Provo at BYU. And so you're gonna learn a lot more about the educational work being here done here at Utah State and how you might be able to get involved. And there's opportunities to present and talk about your own experience as an instructor, talk about what you've learned um, through your different experiences and different tools that you may have used. It's a really good place to find mentors, to talk to people who are these really, really good teachers who you want to learn from um, and get involved with some of the educational work being done here and find your peers who are also interested in teaching. Um, 
I connected at one Teaching for Learning conference um, in, with an instructor in the biology department who was doing work on essentially research in the, in the classroom. And I was really interested in that. And I actually went through and attended all her TA meetings to kind of understand how that process worked. And it was a really great learning experience for me that came from these conferences. We also have learning circles. So this year we'll have learning circles specific for graduate students. And this is an opportunity to learn more about the pedagogy behind teaching and the different theories, best teaching practices, and most importantly, maybe meeting peers and mentors in teaching, talking to your peers about what worked well for them, what resources they recommend, and kind of their experience going through can be really, really useful, especially um, in really research intensive programs where your department might not be able to give you that information on the teaching side of things. So where to start is their first step is gonna be going into this link and enrolling in ETE 10. And so this will be a Canvas course. And when you go into this ETE 10, if you hit the start here, you can go through and watch this video on the professional learning pathways and all the different options you have. And you can go through and earn an Engage badge right now just for attending this conference. So if you go through and scroll down in that start here, you can see the commonly earned badges. And um, under this Engage level badges, you can click on this ETE conference. Um, maybe it's your first conference. There's others uh, down in this ETE conferences uh, title that is options for your second or third ETE conference. And that's all it takes. You fill out a reflection, you talk about what you learned at this conference, and that's your first step towards earning a certificate. Um, so we'll put in our contact information here. If you guys would like to reach out to us, we are happy to answer any questions, um, kind of point you in the right direction if you're interested in some of these resources. And we really hope that we'll see you at some of these different uh, different activities, and we can't wait to get to know you guys. Thanks.